Hello everyone, welcome to Sample Sunday or hashtag 365 days of samples 2.0. This is the same project that I've been doing for years, just slightly modified. It's more like a samples empties now than it is like a project pan, although there is a little bit of that element still there because I'm still choosing products randomly. However, I've just decided to organize things a little bit differently. So I've got my little box here. This is the box I've been keeping my samples in. It's just a convenient size and it's very handy. So I've got everything that I've used over the last month. I can't believe it's already been a month of just various makeup and skincare and hair stuff and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So I'm just gonna go through them. Uh, there's only one thing that I'm still working on and there are a couple other samples I have sort of in progress, but I'm not checking in on all of those things. I'll just talk about them when they're finished. What I find really interesting about this project and why I wanna keep it going is how much you can learn from a sample, whether or not it's something that you need to try again or something that you definitely want to purchase because it's something that you just keep thinking about. I have one of those products. But anyway, that's enough rambling. The first thing I have here is from Jo Malone. This is the English Pear and Freesia Body Creme. So I did finally finish this one. Now, I'm not a body cream person, body lotions. If you've been watching this project for a little while now, you will know that already. I just hate the feeling on my skin. Like every now and then I can find some that sort of seep in nicely, but it's still never been enough to actually make me want to go buy it just because I just don't use it. I just don't have dry enough skin and I just don't enjoy putting on body lotion enough to actually wanna purchase something. So I really love artificial pear scents. So I did like the scent of this one. It was a little bit sticky for me and a little bit too rich, just too floral to be a scent that I would actually try and find it in another format because I'm pretty sure they have these scents and candles. I know there's Jo Malone candles, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's an English pear scented candle, but it's just, I didn't enjoy it that much. I definitely have like body gels and like hand soaps and stuff that have artificial pear scent that I really enjoy and like and would seek out in other formats. Just not, just not this. This is a random product. This is This Works deep sleep pillow spray. So I was very curious about this product because it says it's supposed to help you sleep better. Actually, okay, I'll read exactly what it says inside. It says, good skin starts here. Beautiful skin always starts with a good night's sleep. Try our clinically proven deep sleep pillow spray, a powerful super blend of true lavender, wild chamomile, and vetiver to help you fall asleep faster, naturally, and wake up feeling and looking more refreshed. So it says it's proven to work. 89% of users fell asleep faster than normal and 99% slept better than normal. So you simply shake it and spray it into your bed. So I did this and I didn't notice that I slept any better. Now I don't tend to fall asleep very easily unless I'm really tired and I often have a lot of nights where I just am up very late because I just can't get my mind to settle down enough to go to sleep, which is why I was sort of hoping this might help a little bit. It didn't, but that's okay. I mean, it's a sample. I wasn't really expecting that much from it. I've tried some of these things before, even just hoping it would have some sort of placebo effect. If I can just convince myself that it will work, maybe it will work, but it didn't. So for me, this didn't work. I have a couple of hair things which I'll just gloss over quickly because I wear wigs. So uh, the first thing I have here, this is a deluxe size. This is from Alterna. It's the Caviar Anti-Aging Replenishing Moisture Conditioner. So I always hope for the most from moisturizing conditioners. I have very dry hair. This one didn't moisturize or hydrate my hair well enough. I still felt like my hair was really dry even after using a ton. I will use a ton of conditioner and let it sit in my hair sometimes and this just didn't work for me. The Briogeo Blossom and Bloom Ginseng Plus Biotin Shampoo. This is one of the things that I had randomly drawn last time. This was okay. I remember using it before and liking it and I used it this time and I really didn't like it that much. I felt like it didn't really volumize my hair. 
I'm always trying to get volume. Like I wish I could cut my hair in this sort of style and it would actually be this voluminous. The reason why I haven't cut it like this to match my wig is because I know it would just be like stick straight against my face and it just isn't as flattering as having like a little bit of volume and texture and I just can't get that in my hair. So that was disappointing because I was really thinking I was going to like it and then I just didn't end up liking it. I just felt like it didn't do much. And then I dug out another set. This is a shampoo and a conditioner. So this is from IGK and this is the Hot Girls Hydrating Shampoo and Hydrating Conditioner. So first thing I have to say is that packaging can really get me sometimes and I've been almost, almost sucked into the IGK products before because the packaging just looks so cool. I love that they call it hot girls and they actually have like hot girls on the packaging and it, you, it kind of feeds into that fantasy of being like, wow, if I use these products, I will have this like beachy, amazing hair like these girls do. And they kind of sell the lifestyle a little bit too. Like on the back, it says, hair no longer needs to suffer the 24 seven demands of a jet set life. For deep moisturizing and damage control, apply throughout lengths or to areas that need additional repair. Blow dry for the soft, lustrous, and totally in control style of a hot girl. And it's definitely selling, selling that lifestyle. Like, I don't have a jet set lifestyle. I will never have hot girl hair. But yet there's still something about the packaging, about the marketing, that almost has me convinced that I could get there. If I just use these products, it will work for me too. And no, they just didn't work. It didn't hydrate my hair at all. I just, I used it twice. Like I used the shampoo and conditioner twice. That's how much product was in the packaging. And no, it just, it didn't give me hot girl hair and it didn't give me hydrated hair. So most of what I have here is skincare. The one thing that is still in progress for me is the YSL Black Opium Floral Shock Perfume. So I held off from using this for a little while because I was like, I don't know. I really like the classic black opium perfume a lot. It is that sexy, sultry perfume that just makes you feel good and it also makes me feel like I'm walking through a Sephora, which is like my happy place. So I just, I didn't want this to sort of taint the classic black, black opium, but then I tried it and I actually really like it. So I've been using it sort of sparingly because I do like it. So I just want to cherish it a little bit. I tried a sheet mask from Patchology and this is supposed to be one that illuminates the skin. It didn't do anything for my skin. I don't know what it is with me and sheet masks. I, I definitely enjoy using them more than I ever did before, but I just haven't been able to find a sheet mask that works well enough for me. But there's still time. There's still a lot of things to try. So maybe there's one out there somewhere. Another face mask, this is from Kate Somerville. This is the Wrinkle Warrior, the pink plumping mask. This one didn't do anything for me either. I kept forgetting to use it because every time I used it, it did nothing. I noticed no improvement to my skin whatsoever. It's so unusual because so many times I will use face masks and I will see results if it's not the first time I use it, at least the second time. And there was like five uses in this little thing because you only need a really thin layer on your face. And I just didn't see any kind of results at all. And it's bizarre. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of good luck with Kate Somerville products. A lot of people recommended um, her acne treatment thing to me when I was dealing with some major breakouts and I picked it up and it was like $35 Canadian, something like that. Did nothing. Did nothing. Every time I have a breakout, I still try and use it. Does nothing. I use like Clean and Clear from the drugstore for like eight bucks and it gets rid of my breakout within like six hours. So I don't know. Maybe it's just me and my skin and Kate Somerville, just one of those brands that I just haven't fallen for. I've tried so many products via samples mostly, but I still, I've tried so many and nothing has really, you know, captured me, made my skin look good. I have a face cleanser from Youth to the People. This is kale, spinach, green tea, and vitamins. It's supposed to be an age prevention cleanser. And I did only get one use out of this tiny sample. And from that one use, it really didn't do much. It didn't really seem to cleanse my skin that well. I much prefer the fresh soy face cleanser to this one. I don't really see how this would necessarily be an age prevention cleanser. As much as I do take steps to take care of my skin, I don't know, there's something about that phrase age prevention that I just really don't like. So that's just semantics, but 
anyway, I won't be purchasing that cleanser. Now this is a sample that I did like. This is from Dr. Jart. This is the Ceramidin Cream. This left my face feeling so incredibly hydrated. So I've been all over the place. As I've mentioned many times, I have combination skin that truly is combination skin and goes everywhere. So sometimes I will be very oily, sometimes I'll be very dry. I've had a bit of dryness, especially in this area here. And this really seemed to help a lot with that sort of dryness. Um, I was even noticing a little bit of flaking around my nose area, like on the bridge of my nose, but also the sides of my nose. It's sort of like a genetic thing that like my mother has the same thing, especially in the summertime. You go out the sun in a little bit and all of a sudden you get like a tiny burn and you're flaking all over the place. This seemed to help a lot. I definitely like really hydrating face creams when my skin is on the drier side. I need to have a little bit of everything because where my skin changes so often, sometimes if my skin is oily, something like the Ceramidin Cream would not work at all. But when I do have dry spots, I need something that's going to really, really hydrate my skin. And this is something that I would definitely purchase to have on hand. All right, so we are getting down there. I did use quite a few samples over this last month. So from Origins, I have the High Potency Nitamins. This is a night cream. This was okay. Just not anything particularly special. I have a few things I like using at nighttime and this thing just didn't seem to make a huge difference in my skin. The thing I look for with night creams is exactly how my face looks when I wake up in the morning. Do I notice any kind of difference or is it like I didn't put anything on my face before bed at all? And with this one, I didn't notice any difference, but with this one I did, and I hate myself for it. This is the Magic Night Cream from Charlotte Tilbury. And I used this the first night right after I had done my sample video. And I was telling myself, there's no way this is going to work. No way. Plus it's gonna be very expensive, so no. I'm just not gonna like it. I woke up the next morning and they say that it's instant beauty sleep. It is. I couldn't believe how flawless my skin looked and I was like, this has to be some kind of joke. This is just a coincidence. Maybe I just am having a good skin day. I just drinking a lot of water. I don't know. Tried it again the next night, magic skin. And I was like, okay, I've got enough for one more use. I'm gonna leave it for a few days, which ended up being more like two weeks. And then I used it again and I was not having a good skin day. I was having really noticeable dark circles. My skin was just sort of like red in spots. I put this on and I was like, let's see if this will work. And I woke up in the morning and my skin looked amazing. And I was like, I have to buy this. I have to buy this magic cream. Like that's the right name for it. I couldn't believe it. So I haven't purchased it yet. It's on my wish list. I'm trying to talk myself out of it just because I do have some other things remaining, but now I'm trying to finish those things up. Basically, when I get this, I wanna get it for a reason, not just because I really want it, I actually want it to be replacing something because that's something that I've been really striving towards, just not having a whole collection of stuff and then never using some of it. So I just use what I have that's still good and then I will buy the Magic Night Cream because, I mean, I have to say, after using it three times, it truly feels like magic and it was good enough that I really want to purchase it and I keep thinking about it. And when a product, regardless of what it is, sticks in my head well after I finish the sample, I know it's going to be something that I'm going to end up buying. And this has happened to me many times. I've talked about it before, the products that I have purchased because of this sample. Um, the last thing, so this is going to be kind of anticlimactic because I didn't like this one. This is a face primer, so there's only one sort of makeup related thing in here. Sorry about that, I just really wasn't using makeup samples. This is from Tatcha. This is the Silk Canvas Filter Finish Protective Primer. This, I did not like this at all. It just left my skin feeling so greasy. I felt like foundation applied nicely on top of it and it did look good but I hate the way that it felt on my skin like I felt like it was just sitting on my skin and I was very conscious of it being there and it was very slick and I just I didn't like the feeling of it I like face primers and just most makeup products in general that I don't really feel on my face like a lot of the times depending on what I do with my makeup it's only if I put something like weird on my lips or if I'm wearing false eyelashes but I like stuff to seep in 
and things that just sort of sit there and are very noticeable or very heavy and awkward I don't like and that's this primer it was just very uncomfortable on my skin because it was just so noticeably there so it did look good like my makeup looked good with that base underneath but I just did not like the way that it felt on my skin at all so I just can't imagine buying that and using it despite the way that it looked. I do have other base products that make my skin look pretty good so I don't need to use a primer that's going to make me feel like uncomfortable and self-conscious like I know that it's there which is weird that sounds really weird but that's just how it felt. All right so here are my new Sample things, these are what I showed before with my hair, skin, makeup, and perfume. So I will choose a little something from each little category to help guide me through the next month. And then I will choose the rest of the things on my own as per usual. So from the hair thing, let's see, digging around in here. I have the Alterna Caviar uh, Smoothing Hydro Jelly. So I actually really like this finished it, haven't purchased the full size yet because I have been living off samples. So this is a product I already know I like. I tried the sample and bought it before, but that's okay. Uh, the hair things, are th I don't think are really as important as some of the other things anyway. I say important um, just because of everything else. Um, I just picked from skincare, the Glam Glow Super Mud Clearing Treatment, which I've used before. And I did like, but I have not purchased the full size yet. So always good to have this on hand. I think I will pick another thing from skincare just because I do have a lot of it. So let's see what we got here. We have from uh, Josie Marin. This is the Whipped Mud Mask. This is Sweet Citrus. This is Argan Hydrating and Detoxifying Treatment. So I've used various Josie Marin products before. I've used some of the... Uh, whipped mud masks before and really liked them so that's always a good thing for me so the makeup let's see what we got here we have from glam glow this is the glow starter mega illuminating moisturizer in nude glow so i'm not actually going to pick another perfume where i'm still working on the ysl one but i will pick another makeup thing just for fun just because why not okay so we have, this is Dip Brow from Anastasia. I'm not gonna stick with the Dip Brow because I'm already working on that, so I will pick something else. Let's see, what is this? This is the Cover FX Contour Kit. So I did use this before, it was okay, I will use this again. There's gonna be a lot of repeat samples in here now just because I've already tried so many things and I haven't been making many orders recently. I feel like this is a good assortment of things to work with, things to start with anyway, and then I will pick things and have a, hopefully a very healthy amount of samples to talk about like I did this week. Thank you guys so much for watching and for showing me so much love for this project. I'm so glad you guys love this because I really love playing with different samples and trying different things and seeing how my opinion changes from you know week to week and even year to year. So anyway, thank you so much once again. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead of you and I hope we get a chance to chat soon. Bye for now.